So the uh, uh, episode of Yale College is um, passed and uh, we begin now with uh, my decision while at Yale to become an architect. And uh, what I wanted to do, instead of going to graduate school, which is what most people do, I thought I would do it the old-fashioned way and become an apprentice, uh, become an office boy in an office and uh, see how far I could get that way. So uh, I went off to Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, got an apartment, a cooperative, paying very little rent, and uh, I started looking for work. I, I did get a job as an office boy, which was essentially an apprenticeship position, at a very famous firm called the Architects Collaborative. And uh, this, they had about 200 architects. It was a very large firm. Uh, it had been founded by Walter Gropius. And Walter Gropius was, uh, had been um, uh, head of the Bauhaus in uh, Germany, one of the um, most uh, renowned uh, sites of modern art and design in Europe and in the world. And uh, he came to this country, he got involved with Harvard, took some of his Harvard students and started this company, this architecture firm. I was an office boy there and uh, I delivered mail to certain of the architects and uh, uh, waited for an opportunity to become a, a, a draftsman get experienced draftsmen. Sometimes they, they had extra work to do. The, the office boys were allowed to do it. And uh, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, I got distracted into dance. I had always been interested in dance and I started doing folk dancing at Yale, uh, international folk dancing. And uh, I, uh, as a recreation form, I, I would do uh, dancing uh, every so often, usually once or twice a week at various places. At MIT they had uh, a lot of activity, uh, also at the, the uh, Cambridge YWCA. And I was invited, uh, as luck would have it, whether it's good or bad, I don't know, I was invited to join a performing group, the top uh, folk dance performing group in Boston. And normally you have to audition for this, you have to uh, uh, appear at a, a a session there and, and try out, but I was just, they telephoned me and asked me to join without an audition, so this was unusual. And uh, I uh, thought about it and I realized that this would be taking me away from my professional goals, my, my career goals, at least in terms of architecture, but uh, I thought that it was such a great opportunity and represented such a, a, um, a distinction that uh, at a time when I was not getting any positive strokes for being an architecture apprentice. And I was uh, swayed away from architecture toward dance, so I joined the group. It was very exciting, but as a result of having this alternate interest, I, I um, uh, didn't put my full effort into pursuing architecture as an apprentice. And I became disenchanted with the uh, uh, situation at work and eventually I, I um, was passed over in a, uh, in a, in a sense by, by uh, certain things that happened and uh, lost opportunities and I became very disenchanted with work and I became psychotic in fact I became so I became manic I, be, I started to uh, because things in the reality weren't working out I created this uh, uh, imaginary world that I started to live in and things no longer were real to me. They seemed real, they seemed very real, and I pursued uh, uh, this course of um, action in my mind that took me various places. I didn't sleep for three days, I walked around, uh, left to work uh, environment, I was walking around in town, I did some uh, strange things in Cambridge and the police took me in. Actually one of the things that led me in this direction was that I had heard uh, from a a friend, uh, somebody who lived in the same building with me, about occult experience and that there were, uh, according to him, there were these masters that uh, came into the society from time to time when there was a great need and to provide uh, stimulus that would help mankind get past the difficulties. And I found this to be a fantastic um, uh, 
in in a in a uh, neutral sense, fantastic in a neutral sense, uh, picture of reality. And if it was true, it represented a dramatic departure from my understanding of what reality was. And this contributed to my uh, fantastical thoughts and uh, ended up in psychosis. So I wound up in the hospital and uh, was there for about 10 days. Then I got back. Uh, they put me on to Thorazine, which really knocked me for a little bit. It's a powerful drug, powerful. I hated it. It made me sleepy all day long. So I went back to work I, because I was no longer psychotic. Um, but I wasn't uh, really a, a serious contender for the, any positions at, at work because I just was not able to do very much. And uh, um, after a few months, I stopped taking the medication because I hated it so much, and I relapsed, and then I, they gave me some other med types of medication, tried them out, and nothing was working out. I went back and forth, in and out of the hospital a number of times, so I decided to, to do something different. I called my dad, and uh, after some discussion, I decided he uh, allowed that I, he would let me come to live with him. So I left Cambridge, Massachusetts, went down to Florida to live with my dad, and uh, <clears throat> didn't go very well there either. They tried different medications, and um, I wound up in the hospital because I was acting psychotic, and um, there at the hospital in, in Florida, state hospital, um, they put me on to Melaril, a new, uh, a different drug, and it seemed to be better. Uh, I wasn't quite so sleepy, and it was uh, gave me a, a more uh, constant state of of good, you know, healthy thinking, and um, so I uh, began to be optimistic again. So I decided what I would do uh, to to take a new direction. Um, uh, to get myself back on my feet, I decided I would get a PhD in mathematics. And in order to, the, to do that, I would have to get a second bachelor's degree because my degree was in economics at Yale. And uh, so that I would get a second bachelor's degree in, in mathematics and then go on and get a PhD, become a, a professor of, of mathematics. And I had always, as a young kid, I had thought about that, that I liked math and I might want to do it someday. Or science. So I, I went back to school. I went to the University of South Florida. Uh, they had a second bachelor's degree program there. Uh, I started in mathematics, but I, I took a, a, an astronomy course uh, just as an elective and was so enthused by it that I decided, well, uh, it, it, why not do astronomy instead of mathematics? Because I was interested in astronomy as a kid also. It was a, represented a, a, a lifelong interest. So uh, in order to become an astronomer, I would have to get a a uh, bachelor's degree in physics and apply to schools in astronomy for the PhD. So I, I changed my major to uh, physics and then I, I transferred, um, as it happened after five quarters at the University of South Florida, I transferred to the University, University of California at Santa Cruz. I happened to be out there for a summer job at, at NASA and um, a friend of mine introduced me to UCSC and I transferred there and that's where I finished. I got my, my second master's degree in physics at the University of California at Santa Cruz. However, it was only after another two years after finishing courses that I got my degree because my senior thesis was not accepted. There were a few problems. My advisor said that I had to correct these problems before I would uh, have my my thesis approved, and that was a requirement for graduation. So uh, things went on from there, and that will be in the next episode that I'm talking about here in these talks. But um, I did have the degree from Yale uh, already, so I was able to go to graduate school and matriculate into graduate school without having my physics degree. I had my economics degree, and that enabled me. Uh, under regulations to uh, matriculate as a graduate student. I had applied to a number of astronomy schools while I was finishing up my studies at uh, Santa Cruz and uh, a number of good schools and I was hopeful that I would get in. I got into only one and that as it turned out was Yale again. I got back into the Yale uh, graduate school uh, to study for a PhD in astronomy 
and uh, I matriculated. I started studying there, but I didn't like the Melrill either, even even though it was better than Thorazine. So while immediately after getting my my um, acceptance notice from Yale for graduate school, I decided that it wasn't worth it for me to become a professional and be taking Melrill because I was overweight, I was not socially active, I was, uh, you know, I was not an appealing date. People didn't accept dates when I asked them, so I was having trouble. So I went off the Melrill. When I found out I was going to have a chance at a profession, I said, if it works, good, then I'll have it without the Melrill. If it doesn't work, well, I'll just, that's a risk I'm going to have to take. So I took that risk. Uh, I started a, in improve my attitude because I wasn't taking any medication and um, it got better and better but then uh, I do have this illness and uh, even to this day I admit that I now I have I've come to the conclusion I am ill I do need to take medication I'm working on it I'm working on improving it but I do need it. and I needed it then and uh, because I stopped taking the medication I relapsed and this happened uh, a couple of months into my, or actually one month into my studies for the PhD. And uh, consequently I had to uh, leave school and uh, um, I became homeless. And uh, this is what a lot, of, a lot of people with mental illness uh, go through. They can't survive in the in the world and, and one thing leads to another and they become homeless and this happened to me. It was a risk I took and uh, that's what happened. So um, uh, that is that brings me up to the uh, next episode. But that concludes my... Uh, um, I had a second chance and, and uh, it worked. I proved that, that I had it but uh, uh, the, this episode that I'm describing is mostly a matter of um, um, getting to a certain level of, of um, getting past the problem and reaching a new opportunity and that's what I'll talk about in the next episode.